Hey butterflies, it's your girl Pam and it's time for story time. Okay guys, let me just tell y'all. I love y'all. Lord knows I do, but if this don't take this time, I don't know what to do. I have taped this entire thing. I turned around and it wouldn't upload. Then it turned around again and then there was no sound. <laughs> don't know what's wrong. I don't know if it's my computer. I don't know if it's the camera. I don't know what it is. So, we're going to try this again and pray for the best. Welcome to story time. All right, butterflies, let's jump into it. One of my beautiful butterflies asked me to tell the story about how I got my Habitat house. So, this is just for you, Christy. Um, so I got to give you a little backstory so you can have a clear understanding. Now, first of all, I'm not here to push my religion, my beliefs, my Christianity, my anything on you. That is not my goal. Let me just make that quite clear. It's not my goal. I know who I am. You know who you are. And that is what we believe in. However, in this particular story, I will be sharing the goodness of God. If that offends you, please, by all means, click off. It is not my intention to offend anybody. I will respect you as long as you respect me. So, I um, have been married three times. And I, the first husband, I did not have any kids with. Second husband is Brianna and Kiana's dad. And then the third husband is Janae's dad. So, um, in... 2003, um, I got pregnant. I had a miscarriage. I was married to, was I married yet? I don't think I was married. No, that was 2002 I had a miscarriage. 2003, I got married to Janae's dad. And um, we were, of course, a blended family. He did not have kids or so I thought. Still has not been confirmed, but um, his mother says he has kids, and so we'll roll with that. But anyway, they were not active in his life. He was not active in theirs. So, technically, he had no kids that I knew or can confirm. Um, and the girls, my daughter started calling him daddy. Uh, I did not advocate for them to do that. Um, they decided to, to do that. Their father was not in their lives like he should have been and i guess he was there and you know they wanted a dad so they started calling him daddy okay uh let's make it quite clear my mother did not like husband number one number two nor number three <laughs> i tease a lot she came to the first marriage came to the second wedding and i guess she got tired knowing it was going to end in divorce so she just checked out so my mom passed away for whatever reason he kept leaving and kept coming and leaving and i was like look i'm over this i've given 150 percent. i'm not giving not another red thing i am over this so when you leave this time i'm gonna need you to leave and take your toothbrush your underwear and your work rotisserie chicken maker so he knew when i said that rotisserie chicken maker it was a wrap for him so um that was christmas he was gone by the end of the year and i said okay thank god i'm not pregnant that was the first thing i said because you know i already had two kids i was like okay well i got into a car accident in january they ended up um calling him instead of calling me to get my car fixed so they went on to call him and he was like why didn't you call me and tell me you got in a car accident look we're not together we headed for a divorce i'm good i'll take my own vehicle not a problem oh no you know i'm gonna come over there and get the car and take it over there and then you can take my truck and um i'll go see the twins and i'm like the twins probably don't want to see you but okay all right so anyway i'm still done kiki calls mommy can you please let daddy come home so they are probably eight maybe nine 
somewhere in there. And I said, look, we'll talk about it when I got home. So the, the end result of that was we will try this one more time because you done brought my kids into this. But once this is over, because I know, you know, past behavior is what your prison is and your future is going to look like unless you want to change. So the bottom line was I was like, okay, so let's give it one more whirl. He went to go get us some wings later that week. And lo and behold, he came through the door and them wings said, bam. I was like, whoa, uh-uh, you got to get that out of here. He was like, you're pregnant. I said, lies, lies you tell. He was like, you are pregnant. Well, lo and behold, he went to the store. He got not one, not two, but three pregnancy tests because he knew I was not going to believe it. And honestly, I was so happy because I wanted another baby, but... You know, I wanted it to be in a healthy relationship. I wanted it to be where, you know, I've already got two kids. Their father's not under the same roof. I didn't want to do this again. So, you know, I'm like, okay. So, um, I was kind of glad that we found out after he we had made the decision for him to come back and not before because I didn't want him to come back for a baby. I wanted him to come back because he wanted to be back. So anyway, we went on and we were going to the um, doctor's appointments. Everything was fine. And then six months in, he just decided he didn't want to do this no more. So evidently, he got him a little twister on the side. And um, and I told him, I said, please, if this offends anybody, well, I don't kill. You cannot make a hoe a housewife, period. So she had no problem in breaking up my my marriage. And so it was going to come back and get her one way or the other. So I was just sitting there waiting. But in the process of that, I didn't know he wasn't paying the house note. So it started going into foreclosure. Now, I honestly, I was trying to hold on to this house. I did not listen. God was trying to tell me it's, it's over. And I'm telling him, no, it's not. And I was holding on to it, y'all, honestly, because I had the house before I had the husband. It was my house. He had nothing to do with it. And I thought, you know, I'm pregnant. I had lost my job. And, you know, I was living on my 401k and paying my bills. And it started to get low. So I told him, I said, look, until I pop this baby out, I'm going to need you to take over. Bad mistake. I left it in his hands. And that was my mistake. Hindsight being 2020. So anyway, my best friend, she got laid off at the same time. And so, literally, my friends um, that were mutual friends of mine and my ex-husband were moving me out while I was giving birth to our baby um, because the house was getting ready to go and be foreclosed. We were waiting on the sheriff to come. So, I had gotten a, um, I was going to share an, a, a townhouse with one of my best friends. She had got laid off at the same time. And so... The deal was we were going to stay, live together for one year, and then she go her way and I go my way with my kids, just so we could get back on our feet. Okay, so that, that was the deal. I was so broke, I wanted to open up a daycare because I didn't want to put Janae in a daycare, but I could not even afford the $35 application fee. That's how broke I was, y'all. And so Chandra, which is my best one of my best friends, she gave me the $35 to fill out for the application got approved but there's no kids coming in and there's no job but by the grace of god the angel landlord came and danny allowed me my aunt to sign for me uh god rest her soul and chandra's father would not sign for her so danny allowed for her um new job uh acceptance letter to to stand for her well <sighs> Janae had never seen her father except for when she was six weeks old. I went to Nordstrom's. I set her on the counter on in the shoe department and said, look, you're getting ready to meet your daughter, period. I don't care if you'll never see her again. She will never say that she did not. Her mom didn't make the effort. The second time was, well, here we go. Two and a half months in, we are in the townhouse. And Chandra is not feeling well. She's in her bedroom. She says, Pam, I don't feel good. I said, well, maybe you should stay home. The twins left 
out to go to school. They came back and said, Auntie, don't go to work today. And she said, well, babies, I got to go because, you know, I don't have any, you know, I don't have any sick time. I just started this job. So she left out. Um, I don't know why nobody, I, I don't even know if anybody was even in the daycare at that point, but um, she left. It was just me and Janae at home. I got to get a phone call. And I honestly, I thought it was a bill collector. And so the a lady says, "Must speak to Chandra, um, relative of Chandra. And I said, well, this is her best friend. Um, she's my roommate. And she says, well, there's been an accident. I said, oh, okay, wait a minute. Let me get my clothes on. I've got a newborn, ma'am, but let me just get my clothes on. Tell me which hospital I'm on my way there. And she was like, ma'am, you don't understand. She didn't make it. And I said, say what? What what do you mean she didn't she didn't make it? And she said, ma'am, she didn't survive the accident. So she was on the interstate. She ended up having, I don't know, a heart attack or a stroke. And she crossed over into oncoming traffic. So I have to sit and mourn the loss of one of my best friends because she's gone. I'm postpartum. So I'm realizing that she is the other half of my rent. I can't afford rent. And so now I'm going to be homeless again. So I go on and I'm having to make the decision to call my landlord, tell him what happened and tell him that I'm, I'm moving. I don't have any choice. Well, the townhouse was a duplex. So he had one side rented out to um, Section 8, and then the other side was my side. So he was guaranteed this side over here, and he says, well, how much can you pay? And I said, well, what do you mean? He was like, just tell me how much can do you think you can pay? And I said, about five fifty, and he says, okay, then pay five fifty. What? Who does that? What landlord have you ever heard of that asks you how much you want to pay? And so that's why I say he's my angel. When I had Janae, I had her on the 27th of August and I literally opened my doors on September the 1st, C-section and all. And so I was, you know, just trying to make sure that I had everything covered. I still had two older kids. I had, you know, a ex-husband that was incognito. When I gave birth, um, he decided to go bowling with his new boo. So I, I was a frazzled and now my best friend's gone. Well, we stayed in it's there for about a year and my best friend of over 40 years, hey, Erica, <laughs> Erica said, why don't you fill out for a... Habitat home. And I said, yeah, I had a foreclosure. I had a repo. They're not going to give me. And plus, it's probably for people that, you know, first time home owners. And she said, just try. And I said, no. So I ended up picking up a, I saw an application. I picked it up. Still have yet to find the application. And so I ended up going ahead and I filled it out lost it and then probably another year later i ended up filling another one out online they ended up um asking me to come to the orientation it was on march 1st 2008 and i said okay i'm gonna go went and i wanted my girls to all have their own bedrooms one because i had put them so through so much that was the least I could do. You know, they were getting older and I wanted them to have their own little space. And just because they're twins does not mean that they want to be together 24-7. So anyway, went on and went to the orientation and I asked, do you all have four bedrooms? You know, build four bedrooms. And they said, no, we don't. 
So I went home to Erica and I said, look, they don't they don't make four bedrooms and I really want that for my girls. So maybe I'll just go in another, you know, go a conventional way. And so she says, they may not make four bedrooms, but God can. And to this day, y'all, she does not remember saying that, right? So I said, okay, all right. So I said, if I'm going to jump in, I'm going to jump in 100%. So I went in. Um, I had to have my uh, taxes. I had to have my current, current um, credit report. That was the longest thing they said that was going to take. Well, I had just ordered mine. It was, as long as it wasn't over 30 days old, I could use that. I had to have um, references and, you know, I own my own business. So I turned everything in, child support, every income stream I had turned it in and so I said they gave us a month and I said I'm gonna give myself a week if this is gonna work then this is what I'm gonna do so that's what I did I turned it in that Friday and um I think we met that Saturday I turned it in that following Friday I knew they weren't gonna get it till Monday so that Wednesday I get a letter in the mail thanking me for submitting Please allow them two months to be able to go through all of the applications and see who was going to move forward. That same night, that same night, I got a phone call and said, we would like to do your family interview in two days um, on that Friday. So the letter said two months, y'all. God says we're going to do it in two days. <laughs> so they came and one of the ladies was the first chemist woman chemist she literally walked the streets of gold with Moses <laughs> literally the streets of gold and so she ended up coming it was another lady and with my application, I decided that I was going to go ahead and send in just a letter of why my credit was jacked up, why my family was all in a mess. This was not who I am. This is things that have happened to me, but I'm still, you know, still going strong. And so the lady came in and uh, both of them came in. And so the older lady, she came in and she says, so is Brianna and Kiana's dad paying child support? I said, yes, ma'am. She called him by name. She said, so is Janae's dad paying child support? She called him by name. I said, yes, ma'am. And I said, wait a minute. This lady is not looking at my file. She's memorized it. I was like, oh, Lord. So she literally had a poker face. So she was like, okay, so you're doing this child care thing. You know you're not going to make money with this. And I said, no, ma'am. Anytime you're dealing with education, you're doing it for the passion of it. You're not doing it for the money, obviously. Then she says, so where are you going to put this daycare if we let, you know, if we give you this house? And I said, well, I'm going to change, you know, turn the, the, the garage into a daycare. Well, you know we're not paying for that. No, ma'am. I understand that. You know, I added up what I think the mortgage is going to be. I Tried to go a little bit on the higher side just in case. And then I will go ahead and make the changes as necessary. So she couldn't get up and down the steps. So the other lady, the younger lady, she went up the steps with me. She said, look, I read your story. I read your letter that you sent. And she says, look, I'm a single mom too. I get it. I definitely get it. So just answer her questions and you'll be just fine. So I was like, oh, thank you. Just a ray of hope. So y'all have to realize my daycare kids were there. <laughs> and I had bribed them with ice cream. I said, if y'all will just be quiet for Miss Pam while this lady come, I will take you to go get you ice cream. Okay, Miss Pam. So they were like so quiet. So the lady walks to the door. She said, you know, I don't make the decisions, but I think that you would be a wonderful asset to you know, habitat. And I said, well, thank you, ma'am. So they left. I knew that it was going to take a couple of months or so, maybe longer for me to hear back. Well, um, 
I had made the conscious decision that I was going to sow into somebody else. Regardless if I got the house or not, I was going to sow it into someone else and allow myself to help somebody build their house. So that's what I did. So I signed up for Lowe's Women's Build. It's every um, Mother's Day. And so I get this phone call and they're like, hi, my name is Mardina. Hey, Mardina. <laughs> and she says, hey, I don't know this lady from Can of Paint, just understand. Hey, um, I'm, we're doing sweat equity hours and um, we're building on my home this week. And if you want to come and volunteer and get you some hours in, you can. And I was like, oh, thank you. I said, but I haven't heard anything yet. I said, I have gone through the application stage and the family home visit, but I, I haven't heard. She said, no, if I'm calling you for sweat equity, you got a house. Ah! <laughs> what? Yes! But I couldn't scream, y'all, because my babies were asleep. I couldn't scream. So I told her, I said, ma'am, I can't scream. I can't yell. I'm going to just sit here and cry. She said, it's okay. I'll cry with you. I'll cry with you. And so 10 years later, we have had our ups and downs, but we are still friends. And um, so some of the best advice she gave me. So for those of you all that may um, be interested in Habitat, let me just tell you. Habitat is not um, where you don't have a payment at all. It is a actual mortgage you have you still pay your taxes you still pay your principal and you still pay your insurance you just don't have interest and the principal is only based on the actual materials not the labor because the labor is what donated um so perfect right so i went and i built and so mardina said look this is what i need you to do if you don't listen to nothing else i say she said, you get out there before they get out there when there's sweat equity uh, time. She said, you don't leave until they leave. She said, you pay your down payment. I think it was like $800. You pay your down payment and you go ahead and you make sure your educational hours are done. And then when they're ready to assign you a house, they're not waiting on you. You're waiting on them. And I said, okay, I did everything she said. So... They decided to build two four-bedroom homes. Now, remember, back at the orientation, they didn't build four bedrooms. But two families had different dynamics in their families. Um, the house that I live in, her dynamic, which is, she was supposed to live in this house, her dynamic was she had an older son, two older girls, and a younger daughter. So they couldn't be in the same room. So the older girls could sleep together in the same room, but the younger uh, daughter couldn't. So they had to make a four bedroom. So she ended up going on workman's comp. They couldn't verify her at um, her amount of her salary um, to be the, the, at the, you know, the minimum. So they put her on pause until um, she was able to go back to work. So who was next in line? That would be me. <laughs> that would be me. So I was next in line. And my babies got their own bedrooms, y'all. Now, when I went to the orientation, they told me that it would be a two-year process. Once again, God works. He is he's so awesome, y'all. If you don't know him, please look for him. <laughs> please find him. March 1st was my orientation, not induction into the program, just the orientation to find out about the program. And December the 8th of the same year, I was in my house. So, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Nine months later, I was in my home. So, that's why I say... God can do anything he wants to do, anytime he wants to do it. So, with that said, um, I, and I've told y'all how much, I think my house note went up about $10 this year, but 
I don't have interest. Um, you know, I've got insurance and I got principal and I have um, taxes. So for a four bedroom, two bath ranch home with a large backyard, um, one car garage, I pay $461 a month. Ain't God good in, in the Georgia, in the Atlanta, Georgia suburb. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. You can't even get a one bedroom apartment for that. So I know how blessed I am. So, um, that's story time, y'all. I am so happy. I hope this gets on y'all. I promise y'all, I am about tired <laughs> of this whole thing. You know, my thought process is, Somebody needs to hear this. I don't know who it is, but I hope that you receive it. I hope that you get it. If there, and I'm putting this out there, if you need to email me, if you've got questions about Habitat, please don't hesitate. Put them in the comments. Email me. Anything that I can possibly do to help, I will do it. This is my 12th year, going into my 12th year. And, you know, you have sweat equity hours. That's It was about 350 so you have to do at least half and then you can have like help people like your family and relatives volunteer family and relative family and friends volunteer for your other hours they uh, the twins weren't necessarily old enough because they were only like 12 or so to like hammer and all that good stuff but they allowed them to lay sod they had jay today had a bucket at two picking up rocks <laughs> And they gave me hours for that too. So therefore, you know, I can get through the process. And so I am so blessed. I um, I'm so blessed. I'm so incredibly blessed. So I want you guys to be able to see. I'm going to put it in here uh, in just a second. Um, the Me going through my frame of my house for the very first time. Um, if you guys aren't subscribed, what are you waiting on? What are you waiting on? Come on. Come on and be a part of the butterflies. If you want to deal with debt, go over to the Facebook page, Pam Meets World, Ditching the Debt. Um, we, we support each other. We love each other. So I want you guys to come to that. Um, I love you guys so much and I appreciate everything and all of the comments. And so I just want you guys to know how much I appreciate you. Um, and Christy, thank you for the request. I hope you enjoyed the um, story time. And until next time, love you butterflies. <laughs>